Good afternoon. It's good to be here. I've never stood on this red circle, so that's nice. I hope you're ready for this, eight minutes. In 92, my brother gave me an account at Hactic, Holland's first internet provider. And through Hactic, I got to know the internet. And for the first time, I saw all those possibilities with Telnet, with Gopher, and I was able to log into a library in Kansas, play games with people in Japan, chat with somebody in France. And I fell in love with it. This was going to be my, my home for the next years, the internet. I was going to work there, and I, I stayed there for a long time. In 2008, I was ready for the next stage of the internet and of what I was doing. With three partners, we were starting a venture in mobile, our own company. And while we were doing that, I had a little cough. The doctor said, you know, it's, you're, you're doing a, your old job still, you're starting this big thing, it's probably stress. So here's an inhalator, uh, uh, a breather thing, that'll help it. Well, it didn't. So I went back, we went, uh, had an x-ray taken, and they had some bad news. The tumor the size of two fists between my lungs. Everything stopped. I knew then that what I expected to happen was not going to be you know, the way I thought it was. It's going to be different. But like I had done over these last years, and, and I did that then with the new tool, I shared it right away on Twitter as soon as I could. And I was amazed at all the feedback, all the attention, all the love I got from people. It made me feel good, because for me, this was a new journey. I didn't know what to do, and I needed all the help I could get. So with that web knowledge I had, I created a web blog, a blog, Martin's Journey, chronicles on this unexpected journey, to share my experiences, to inform, and hopefully help a little. I shared all kinds of things. I made several videos of me, whatever was happening, of mice in the hospital, I will tell you which later, <laughs> of me shaving my hair before the chemo took it, of me feeling miserable. When my chemo was over, four, round, four rounds of three weeks of chemo, pretty bad, I felt miserable, but I, you know, I went to the, the doctor, the oncologist, and said, so what's next? He had some bad news. He said, it looks like it's not shrinking quick enough. So we're going to do another bout, another round of chemo. I was not up for this. I knew then that it's going to do even more permanent damage. I was so weak then. This is when Matt contacted me. Matt was like me, a cancer patient. He had the same form, mediastinal germ cell tumor. And he found my blog just by Googling that term. And he told me by e uh, via email that it's, it's normal that you cannot, or yeah, that it doesn't look to disappear, but actually it is. So through his help, we came into contact, uh, with his help, we came into contact with Dr. Einhorn, the specialist in this area. And my oncologist and him, we consulted, and we determined that it was best to not continue the treatment and wait. And that was the best thing ever. Because through that, I survived. I did not need any more treatment. The tumor shrunk. And with the help of the tools that I used, my communication, my sharing, I got the information that changed the course of my disease. No treatments. Very simple. So now I'm ex-patient 2.0. I'm really happy with that. And life goes on. You go back to work. Great to be back nor and, and do normal stuff. And within little over a year after my job, we had this idea about an augmented reality browser. Augmented reality is this technology where you combine reality, that which you see now, and digital information. And we wanted to do that on the mobile. And just like the web has web pages, we would do it in layers. Everybody would get their own layer. So we launched this, and man, I thought cancer would change my life. This did too. The press called, investors called, everybody called, and they wanted to do all kinds of stuff with us. And we knew that we could not contain this. This was such a powerful thing that we should open it up 
just like I learned on the web. Open it up, share, have everybody else try and do cool shit with it. Excuse my word. So people created, right now there's over 4,000 layers live. 15,000 people have logins and create these things. The, the, the Berlin Wall is back in Berlin. Most of it is broken down, but with the browser, with, with your phone, you can see it in 3D. You can see UFOs flying. You can see tweets around you. You can find AED machines around you. So that was amazing. And now we're ready for the next stage. Now the phones are getting so powerful that they can recognize paper, pages, images, posters, and packaging. So with our open platform, the Radboud had this great idea that why not create for the healthcare something that helps people who do not, helps people who do not read well. In Holland, there's a quarter million people who are not able to read well. And they, like anybody here, would need to use an inhaler at some point in their life. Not everybody, but a lot. And just for that, we made, with augmented reality, and now I ask the host to come out here to show it for the people in the web stream. <laughs> and the camera with it. Where is the camera? I think there's a camera there. To show this short. Is the camera catching this? Anyway, you can play the video uh, on the presentation. In short, you can see the instruction on how to use the inhaler on top of the, video, uh, on top of the uh, box. So you do not have to read the instruction and get the text. No, you can hear it and you can see it, see the person explain to it. And you can see this. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm really happy to have an open platform and to, aid, well, yeah, to, to, to help in that sense. And just like I learned long time ago when I started out at the, on the web, like I learned with my blog that to inform, to share and help, I hope now that augmented reality will also help people, help them share more and help more. Thank you very much. <laughs>